Well, there's some good news, some bad news, and some possibly misleading news. Some of this is really exciting, especially for those of you with, uh, you know, a $1,600 budget or more likely <laughs> for your new graphics card, because the RTX 4090 looks like it's gonna be absolutely insanely powerful, insanely expensive, and available on October 12th. Interesting to see how available it will be. The price is quite high, although crypto mining shouldn't be as big of a concern. So I still expect these to sell out initially, but maybe come back in stock again soon. Now, if you're the kind of person who wants to have the absolute latest and greatest, do keep in mind that despite this costing $600, this is not going to be using up the entire AD102 GPU because the specs here will support 18,000 CUDA cores, not the 16,000 that we see in the 4090, meaning we are definitely going to see something like a 4090 Ti, or maybe they'll call it a Titan, or who knows, but the point is, this is not going to be the highest end GPU for the entire generation, but we have no idea when we'll see that better one. Now, two to four times faster than a 3090 Ti, is possibly misleading. We need to talk about this. Uh, but let's also, before we talk about that performance jump, get into, okay, here's, uh, it's, what does it look like? Basically the same as a 3090 Ti. It looks absolutely massive, possibly even bigger. They're going with the same basic Founders Edition design. Uh, so it looks pretty similar to last gen. And we're seeing a whole bunch of the board partner cards. Some of these were already leaked ahead of time and those leaks do appear to have been accurate. And again, they look super chonky. And these ones will probably be pushing, you know, past that $1,600 mark. Wouldn't surprise me to see some of these at the $2,000 mark. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, but then we have the RTX 4080 and there's two of them and one of them should have been called a 4070 and I think this is disgusting and the worst thing that happened from this whole, um, uh, this whole announcement. So as rumored on this channel, uh, the RTX 4080 will be coming in two flavors, a 16 gigabyte version and a 12 gigabyte version, but that memory difference and that price difference is not the biggest difference between the two. They will perform significantly different. This is not just you need a little bit more VRAM for some creative application. And the pricing here is awful. The 12 gigabyte version is a $200 increase over the MSRP of the RTX 3080 but I really think it's more like a 4070 successor and this 16 gigabyte card is the actual 4080 successor, 3080 successor, and it's coming in at a $1,200 MSRP. So this is absolutely disgusting. Uh, pricing wise. I hate this, but it was absolutely apparent during the presentation. They showed a slide. I'm sorry. I didn't prepare it for my video here showing the 4,000 series sitting on top of the 3,000 series. Um, so basically showing that these are indeed, um, as we heard from Jensen in, in, uh, reported it on, uh, on like conference calls that I reported on a long time ago, um, that the plan is to slot the 4000 series in, at least initially, on top of the 3000 series. 4080 coming in November, we'll see that uh, 4090 in October 12th. Now, let's dive into more of these actual performance differences, okay? Because here's the thing. First of all, um, that's actually not the slide I was looking for. Um, I could have grabbed this from NVIDIA's website. These are accurate, but I just happen to have this videocards.com article open and all my sources will be in the description to this video. Um, but here's the thing. The 4080 16 gigabyte and the 4080 12 gigabyte, as I mentioned, are just not the same graphics card. Um, there is 7,680 CUDA cores on the 12 gigabyte version compared to 9,728 on the 16 gigabyte version, that means we're only seeing about, what is that, 78% of the CUDA cores. There is a bit of a clock speed boost, but that's not gonna make up for the performance difference we see lost there. Not only is it fewer CUDA cores, but we're also seeing the memory bus down to 192 bit instead of 256 bit, the memory speed at 21 gigabit per second versus 23 gigabit per second, and all of that bringing the bandwidth down to 504 gigabytes per second instead of 736 gigabytes per second. It also runs at lower power. So this is not a 4080 
if this is a 4080. If this is a 4080, that is not. I don't care what they wanna call it. This should have been a 4070 as initial rumors of these specs were pointing towards. But what I think Nvidia decided to do is say, well, if we call it a 4070, then people will expect it be, to be priced at $500 or maybe $600 if we do a price jump. But we want this to cost as much as a 3090 is currently selling for. You can get 3090s in the 900 to $1,000 range currently. Um, so they want, again, these to slot in above the current pricing of the 3000 series. And so that's why they didn't call this a 4070. That's why they're calling it a 4080. It's so that your mental gymnastics will compare it to the pricing of a 3080. And this is still a $200 uh, price jump from the 3080. So Nvidia is hoping to uh, charge people absolutely insane prices. Now, a lot of people are huge enthusiasts and 1600 bucks on your favorite hobby to have the best of the best is fine for you. Don't feel bad about that. Great, this is exciting news. Um, but just, um, I think this is very disappointing for everyone else. And I think it'll be a while before we see the lower tier models. Now, let's get into the performance claims and why these are misleading as well. So it's not just the naming of the 4080 that's misleading, it's these performance graphs, that two to four times performance claim that we're seeing. Okay, so we pull up Nvidia's website. They're claiming the 4090 compared to the 3090 Ti is almost double, all right, almost 2X the performance in Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, a little bit more than two times the performance in Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide and over four times the performance in Cyberpunk 2077. Now here's why this can be a bit misleading. Okay, this is done at 4K, highest game settings, so far so good. This is using DLSS performance mode on the 3090 Ti, and it's using DLSS frame generation on the 40 series card. And this is why this is misleading at least if you're looking for a straight up performance gain um, in an apples to apples comparison. Because the 3090 Ti cannot run DLSS 3, and DLSS 3, if it does what it claims it does, is going to be, in my opinion, the most exciting thing about all of this. So if we pull up, um, NVIDIA's website where they describe and show off a bit of DLSS 3, here's the big difference. It creates additional frames, meaning frames that are not even rendered by the engine at all. And that's different than what DLSS 2 does. DLSS 2, uh, what you can run on your 2000 series and 3000 series RTX cards, takes a lower resolution image and then takes in some temporal data, some jittering, things like that, and then reconstructs a higher resolution image from the lower resolution image. But it doesn't create new frames entirely that aren't even rendered by the engine at all. And DLSS 3 does that. It boosts performance by using AI to generate more, generate more frames, not just upscale frames, to generate new frames by analyzing sequential frames and motion data from the new optical flow accelerator in the 40 series GPUs, again, to create additional frames. This is huge if it actually looks good. If this works well, this is in literally like insanity in, in terms of what this could do. Because this would actually relieve CPU bottlenecks because even if the game engine is limited by your CPU, these additionally created frames are happening on the tensor cores on the GPU and, and created by the DLSS algorithm, not by the game engine. So that is absolutely insane. And here they are showing it off in Cyberpunk um, uh, you know, with this massive performance gain. This is what they're talking about. And I mean, you can watch this video, it does look quite good, but I will say this again is straight on. There is motion here, but um, algorithms, you know, upscaling algorithms, and I don't, even, I don't even know what to call an additional frame creation algorithm, uh, but in traditional upscaling algorithms, a fast moving camera can get a lot of 
ghosting happening. So my big concern here is how well does this work in like a first person shooter if you're, you know, like moving your camera rapidly from side to side because it's gonna need to be able to predict what happens in the next frame to literally just create a new one and insert it right before it generates the next actual frame rendered by the engine. And if that works well, that's amazing, but I think this certainly has the potential to introduce a lot of weird ghosting artifacts and things like that. If it doesn't, this is mind blowing. And I think AMD could be in a bit of trouble other than the price to performance argument, in which case, cause I mean, like I said, I think the price of these cards is insanely stupid, but I should bring up at this point, AMD did preempt this announcement trying to get into the news cycle, saying that on November 3rd, they launch RDNA 3. So November 3rd, um, we will see a launch of RDNA 3 in an announcement. It doesn't say announcement, it says launch. So I don't know, are we getting a reveal before that? Or is this a paper launch and then they're actually in stock later? I don't know. Now we also saw HXL, which is at 9550 Pro, uh, which is a hardware leaker. So who knows, this one, this one's not official. This is official. This one's not official. Leaks and rumors claiming Radeon GPUs hitting almost four gigahertz. That's pretty insane. So um, anyway, I'm interested to see what we see from AMD, but realistically, I don't think they could possibly have something like uh, an AI process or a, a you know, you know, <laughs> uh, an FSR 3.0 that creates additional high quality frames. Again, this only matters if it actually works well in practice. Um, but back to the performance claims, that technology is being used to produce this performance jump because the 4090 can do that. It can, in, it can create new frames and the 3090 Ti can't. It's still running DLSS 2.0. So that's um, extremely important to understand when looking at this. So I am expecting huge uh, ray tracing performance gains and this DLSS 3.0 looks insane, but those performance numbers can be misleading. Now, in terms of the biggest differences in the actual architecture and what it's able to do, um, they're claiming that we are now on the fourth generation tensor cores, which is what they are saying allows for that new DLSS 3 and that's why they're saying that it doesn't run on the older GPUs, although that could be artificial segmentation, maybe it could have ran. But the point is, I think even if it could run on the older ones, they're not gonna allow it because I, I think this is the main selling point for this new, um, this new generation is this ability if this works well. I think this is huge. And the actual um, 1.4 tensor petaflops using the new FP8 transformer in, uh, engine from their Hopper GPUs, uh, which are a data center GPU. I mean, that does sound pretty, pretty insane. Now they're jumping to their third gen RT core. And this does seem to have some big performance gains. And they're saying that their RT teraflop performance is over two times performance. And this gets really interesting on, on some of the details when we get down into the shader execution reordering. So um, basically they're saying that shader execution reordering dynamically reorganizes previously inefficient workloads into more efficient ones that are easier to parallel process, which is what GPUs are good at. And they're saying that this can improve shader performance for ray tracing operations by up to three times and in-game frame rates by up to 25%. Now the way they're, they're claiming that seems a bit weird because does in-game frame rates, is that talking about non-ray tracing, just like general? I don't think so. I think they're implying that certain ray tracing calculations will happen by, by up to three times the efficiency. 
but that the actual frame rate gain you'll get in the game will be up to 25%. And please always notice in every marketing slide the word up to, because up to is talking about a best case scenario, not necessarily an average or typical scenario. So you won't get that in every game. Again, the DLSS 3 could potentially be insane if it doesn't introduce too much ghosting and, and or other um, image artifacts. And they're also gonna have AV1 encoding, um, which is really good. Um, <laughs> Now, I'm hoping that we start to see streaming uh, sites like, tw to my knowledge at this point, uh, not many, if any, live streaming sites are supporting AV1 encoders, but if they do, that's a big deal. Overall, I'm so excited to see what we can do with something like this, but I'm so frustrated by the pricing and especially by this 4080 12 gigabyte model coming in at $900. This is clearly designed to keep the 4000 series above the 3000 series, keep selling the 3000 series. And honestly, I'm wondering if Nvidia is a little bit scared of introducing the, um, the lower tier 4000 series cards if DLSS 3 is as good as it claims because that would really make it make the 3000 series cards that they're still trying to sell, well, a hard sell. <laughs> um, uh, if DLSS 3 can work the actual uh, like black magic type performance gains that it's claiming, because again, those new frames will even relieve a CPU bottleneck, which is crazy. All right, guys, I think that's it for today. I'm super excited to see what happens here. I really want to know what you guys think about all this in the comments section, because I think this is very exciting for high-end enthusiasts and incredibly disappointing for the vast majority of the PC gaming market, just due to the pricing. Um, also, what do you think about AMD? Uh, November 3rd, do you think they're gonna be able to compete with this? We're also seeing uh, AMD's Lisa Su keynoting CES 2023 on January 4th, although um, I don't know exactly what we might find out there. I hope all of you have an excellent day.